Welcome friends. Uh, today I'm going to try and make squeaky cheese curds. Um, this is something that I really love to eat and sadly you can't really find it anymore where we live uh, in Toronto. It's just not something that you see a lot of. So I'm starting out with whole milk. This is pasteurized but non-homogenized. So you see the separation between the cream and the milk here in the jar. Um, this isn't something that you can get at the grocery store here. I had to, I had to search this out. It is available, um, just a little bit more difficult to find. And the cream is essentially a plug at the top of the, of the, of the bottle. So I'm going to pour all of this into this pot. Now, making cheese, I've never done it before. I've, I've made ricotta and you can see those videos elsewhere on the channel. But I've never made cheddar cheese or cheddar cheese curds. So this will be a little bit new for me. And part of it, part of the whole process is, I want to hold a little bit of milk back. Part of the whole process is keeping everything at a certain temperature. Um, you need to control the temperature very tightly. So I've set up essentially a bain-marie or a double boiler. This pot has some water in the bottom and it also has some rings at the bottom to hold this pot off of the bottom. I'm going to heat the water and try to keep it at a constant temperature so that um, the process works as it's supposed to. And we'll see how that works out. I know a lot of people will say in the comments, uh, why don't you use uh, a sous vide machine? And I've got them and I could definitely do that. I think the problem is a lot of people out there don't have them. And let's find a solution that is easily accessible for anyone who wants to try this recipe. So I've got the milk and the cream now in this pot. And so I'm going to stick this pot inside this pot and we need to bring the milk up to the temperature that is currently flashing on the screen. I'm not going to say a lot of the times and temperatures um, just because it's confusing and I don't want to get myself confused. So temperature probe into the milk and uh, we'll keep an eye on that and when it comes up to the temperature we'll move on to the next step. I gotta tell you this milk that I got I've never used it before um, so it's non-homogenized 5% whole milk um, and it's pretty crazy so this stuff here, it's almost right out of the jug. It's almost butter. Let's see if I can get a taste. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. I'm looking forward to these cheese curds. Okay, we're pretty much at the right temperature. You want to bring this up to 91 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I'm at 90 and I'm going to say that's a win. So the next step, um, is to sprinkle on this cheese culture and I will link to the cheese culture down below uh, so that you can get the right one. Uh, in my research there are four or five different cheese cultures that are listed as the right one to make this so I'll link to the one that I used and I'll also try to remember to put in all the other ones. So you want to sprinkle this on and then we're going to let it sit for about five minutes to bloom and then we're going to give it a stir we're going to stir it in to make sure that it's fully incorporated then we're going to put a lid on it and we're going to maintain that 90 or 91 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 minutes. Okay so it's almost been 40 minutes. I have two containers of water in front of me. They're both 60 mils of water and in the first one I want to dissolve calcium. Um, I get this stuff for uh, my home brewery and it changes the water chemistry. Uh, you can also find it in grocery stores, uh, in bulk food stores. It's fairly easy to come across. Um, if you do pickling you're probably using it already and it often goes by the name Pickle Crisp but before you just go and use Pickle Crisp make sure that it's only calcium carbonate. And in the next one I'm going to dissolve some rennet. This is liquid rennet. Now the reason we're dissolving both of these in water is uh, you don't want to just dump them straight into the milk. You want to have them partially dissolved so that it's uh, fully dissolved when you put it in there. So give them both a stir and make sure they are good. Okay, so I did pretty well maintaining the temperature. A uh, little bit of fluctuation, not a whole lot. 
So next up, we just want to stir this and make sure that we've got even temperature inside. And then we want to pour in the calcium. Now, you want to pour it off the spoon um, just so that it doesn't all land in the same place and then stir it in. And I read a bunch of different things about stirring it in. Um, some people say stir up and down like this with a flat spoon. Now, if you have a flat slotted spoon like I do, that will work really well. Uh, and other people said just to stir it and make sure that it gets stirred in and don't really worry too much about how you're stirring it. So there we go. Now, this one is the rennet and we wanna do pretty much exactly the same thing, All right? Pour it, make sure it gets everywhere and then stir it in. Now, once this is stirred in, we're gonna set the timer for another 40 minutes and we're going to continue maintaining around 91 degrees Fahrenheit. And during that time, it should set up completely. Okay. Lid on, timer set. Okay, time is up. Now, what we need to do is check and see if the curd is set. So what you're supposed to do apparently is make a small little slit and then put your knife in and pick it up. And if it's clean, which it definitely looks like it's clean, your curd is set. We can move on to the next step, which is to cut the curd. Now, there's a very special contraption for cutting curd. It kind of looks like uh, X's and O's, and you stick it in and you twirl it around and it cuts the curd perfectly. Um, if you have a curd cutter in your kitchen, that's great. I don't, I'm just gonna use a knife. And so I'm gonna very carefully cut it in a pattern and then cut on a diagonal and see if we can get this curd cut to the right shape and size. And the idea is you don't want to cut the curd too small and you don't want to cut it too large. Now we put the lid on for five minutes and let the curds heal. Okay, so now we start to stir the curds gently. Look at them, look at them, they look pretty cool. Okay, so over the next half hour, I'm going to stir this gently and constantly. And you need to raise the temperature over this 30 minute period. And you can't raise it too quickly. Everybody says if you raise it too quickly, uh, there's something about the acidity that develops and it makes it sour. You get off flavors. So you need to gently heat it and over 30 minutes bring it up to 102 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so this is, this next bit is a little bit tricky. Not only do I have to stand here stirring, um, I have to mind the temperature very carefully. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the timer went off and I've got to 101 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think is pretty good. I didn't overshoot. So now I continue stirring and we go another 40, 45 minutes holding this temperature. Um, and you don't have to stir quite as much at this point. I've seen people say that you need to stir constantly and other people say uh, if you stir every 15 minutes or so, just give it a gentle stir you'll be okay. So I'm gonna sort of split the difference and maybe every five minutes give it a nice gentle stir. Oh, and there we go, we have hit 102. So you can see the curds have changed significantly from what they looked like before. They've gotten uh, smaller and tighter. The whey is more pronounced. So we'll just keep stirring and maintain that temperature. Okay, so there's the timer. now. This is what it looks like. The curds have gotten smaller, much smaller, and they're still distinct. So here's the deal. Now, I would say 
the advice of a lot of the recipes of stirring every 15 minutes is probably wrong. You want to stir more often. What I found was after the first 15 minutes, they started to clump together and they were stuck together. And everything that I read did say that you want the curd to be loose in this liquid. Um, you don't want it to clump together yet at this point. So uh, I would stir every five minutes or gently stir for the whole time period. Now, we do want to let this rest for 15 minutes at this point. You want it to settle to the bottom and you want it to start to clump together before we move on to the next thing, which is draining it into a colander. Okay, so I'm just going to pull the cheesecloth over top here, and we are going to let this sit and drain for about 15 minutes. Um, but I'm going to move it into this bowl, because I want to put the whey back in the original pot, put it back in the bemery, and raise the temperature to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so this next step is called cheddaring. It's the whole reason cheddar cheese gets its name. What's gonna happen now is I've got the curds in this basket covered in cheesecloth over top of the warm whey, and the whey is going to heat and steam just a little bit, and the curds are going to drain. Now, four times over the next hour, so every 15 minutes, I'm gonna pull the curds out, I'm gonna put them on the cutting board, and I'm gonna cut them in half, turn one half on top of the other and then put it back over the pot. Cover it and let it to continue draining. And the idea is over this time period, more of the whey is going to drain out of the curds, making them drier and squeakier. Okay, cutting and folding and cutting and folding and squeezing. So I did squeeze these um, while they were resting in there. And I think that if you put a plate on top of some weight, you would squeeze out even more of the whey. And some of the methods said to do that. Some of them said not to do it. If the objective is to get most of the whey out, I would squeeze it or put something heavy on top of it during that process that we just went through. Now we need to cut it into curds. Um, I've been in a cheese factory where they cut the curds and they use a machine and it shreds it. It's almost a machine like a, like a rototiller for a garden and it shreds it into uneven pieces. Um, we're not going to get that here. So I'm just going to cut it and I'm going to chop it up into smaller chunks that will be the curds. And relax. Yes, I know blue is not the color of cutting board for cheese, but you know, it's the one I could find. Okay, the next thing you want to do is throw them into a container with a lid on a scale because you want to weigh the curds. You want to know how much you've got here to determine how much salt to put in. We have 515 grams. So we need five grams of salt. Oh, 5.2, that'll do. Okay, so sprinkle the salt in. 
put the lid on and give it a shake. The idea here is that you want the salt to get all over every piece of curd. And that's it. We'll let it sit for about a half an hour or so, and then we'll give it a taste. What have you been doing all day? You've been at this for hours. All day, squeaky cheese curds. Uh, when I say all day, it was like, like nine hours of work. Yeah, like you got up early yep. and started yep. this, and now it's... Yep. So... Nine hours, that's not a lot of cheese. No, it's not a lot of cheese. Nine hours and like, like $40 worth of milk. So, I can hear the squeaky from here. That's great. It's very squeaky. Mm -hmm. Mmm, that's a really good cheese curd. Yeah. Um, Did you make some fresh bread to go with it? No. No. Oh. <laughs> so, this will ripen over 12 hours. And so 12 hours from now, it will taste, it will have a more rounded flavor. Okay. And it will still squeak. 24 hours from now, the squeak will be completely gone. Because the squeak is caused by proteins, long chains of proteins. And the lactic acid in the, in the cheese will break up those proteins and it will no longer squeak. Look at you, Mr. So, Chemistry. So 24 hours from now, it'll be... I feel like we need to do a taste again then in 12 hours. So tomorrow morning when I come out, I'll taste again and I'll report back. Yeah, sorry, you'll be on your own, sorry. But at this point, you can put that in a bag, stick it by the counter, yeah. by the, at the depth Sell it six hours for now, yeah. it'll be good to go. Yeah. I'm, so I have a question though. Mm -hmm. It took you nine hours yeah. for what we had. Yeah. Would it take you the same nine hours if you were making three times as much? Oh no, yeah, yes, it would, it would. So the, the, the time doesn't get any longer. Okay. With more volume, okay. but. I How mean, are we gonna eat this in the next 24 hours? That's a lot of cheese. I think I can get through it. Good for you. I think I can get through it. So if, if you were going to make poutine, mm. this is the curd that you need. This is, and you cannot buy it at the grocery store here because <laughs> by the time it gets to the grocery store here, it's cheddar. Yeah. It's cheddar. So the squeak is gone. People are going to ask um, how to store this on the counter. Don't put it in the fridge and consume it within 24 hours. Everything's fine. Oh, which is why it's so great to just get it from the corner store. Oh, what is that? What is that? Le Fer est ketchup. Yes. Yes. Le Fer est ketchup. Oh, yeah. Everything's ketchup. Everything's good. Yep. Le okay. Is ketchup. So, one more. We'll see you in 12 hours. I'm going to put the lid on though. Okay, so here we are about 14 or 15 hours later, and we're going to give this another go. Now, let's see what happened. Still super squeaky. And the flavor's deepened. They've ripened. Um, there is a much better depth of flavor after 14 hours on the counter. Um, so I would say then, with this experience, these cheese curds would be good to eat as soon as you've made them. They are better to eat 12 to 14 hours later. So I guess the final question is, is it worth it? Uh, if you live somewhere that you cannot get squeaky cheese curds, you can't get cheddar cheese curds, um, then yes, it is worth it to give this a shot. It's also worth it if you're on an exploration of food and you really want to better understand how food gets from, and specifically cheese, gets from the cow to the grocery store. This will give you an insight in the entire process, and I think that's important to, to try these things to know whether you want to do it yourself or if you want to buy better quality um, at the grocery store because you discover that what you've been buying is mm, maybe not that great. So, um, give it a try if you want. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.